Good evening, listeners. This is Johnny Kaliga of Brain in a Jar Radio, back with another video for you to listen to. Currently, I am doing a schedule where I do two short stories and then Fight Club every week. But that's kind of hard, considering that um, um, I had to find two short stories to read, and they can be kind of long, and then two chapters of Fight Club's long. So the new schedule is going to be um, poetry, like what we have today. Um, for Wednesday, Saturday will be a gaming video. It will be a video where I read text, so it will be a text-based game, uh, mostly that I'll read and then um, Sundays will be when a new Fight Club video drops or a new novel um, segment drops and uh, I'll try to get out some extra videos every now and then while I've got time for it but um, I thought that would be fun it would bring variety to my channel and yeah so hope you guys enjoy it and please um, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. Shadows lengthen as sunlight dies, and thick clouds curl in starless skies. The night comes early in Carcosa. Black waters break against the rocks, and a western wind sweeps the docks. Ships shun the port of dark Carcosa. No livestock graze on Hiley's plain. No guards patrol those streets profane. The stones are silent in Carcosa. The outer gates are locked up fast. Lo, nigh a century has passed since men knew the truth of Carcosa. The great moons alone, skyborne twins, can speak of nameless pagan sins wrought in the blood of grim Carcosa. But I myself in dreams have seen the yellow banner banner of the king who holds his court in Las Carcosa. Each night in envoy of that land on wings as black as Hasher's hand carries me thither to Carcosa. Six horns, nine tails, no face it hath, and traveler of the yellow path who makes his nest in dead Carcosa. It lifts me up in talons dark, above the tower still and stark, and I see it all, bleak Carcosa. That gargoyle, bring, gargoyle brings me to the throne of he who calls that mad land home. Tall stands the king of all Carcosa, blood red of eye and black of tooth, with waxen face to say the truth. Such is the monarch of Carcosa. Night after night I see that place and its sovereign's jaundiced face. I dream ever of high Carcosa. From this dream I shall never wake. O star-kissed spires of lifeless lake. O yellow fever of Car Carcosa. So I shall dream and I shall sing. Of that mad, pallid, maskless king who wears the crown of dread Carcosa. Cries for mercy and pleas for rest shall die unvoiced in my breast and unheeded by death Carcosa. Is there no calm, no last release? Can death itself not bring me peace? No, never, nine. Mad Carcosa. Samuel Thomas Fraser is an author and actor from the Rainy Mountains of Vancouver, Canada. Sam is a big fan of literature, both medieval and mysterious, and is currently working towards an MA in English at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan. Sam's short work has previously appeared in outlets like the Macabre, uh, the Macabre Museum and Unleashed Monsters vs. Zombies Volume 1 and he has a piece forthcoming in an anthology from 
Scare Street Publishing, his first novel, Abbey Normal, is now available on Amazon. Find Sam on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash st fuffer lip I will post that in, up in the video and his twitter is um st fuffer lip um the web samuel thomas fraser uh, dot com Considering how short that one was, I will extend this with yet another poem that I can find. So, here we go. Two Pan by H.P. Lovecraft See it in Woodland Glen by a shallow reedy stream. Once I fell amusing when I was lulled into a dream. From the brook a shape arose, half a man, half a goat, whose it had instead of toes, and a beard adornished its throat. On a sea of rustic reeds sweetly played this hybrid man, not cared I for earthly needs, for I knew this was Pan. Nymphs and and satyrs gathered round to enjoy the lively sound. All too soon I woke in pain and returned to haunts of men. But in rural vales I'd fain live and hear faint pans pipes again. This next one's called The House and it's by H.P. Lovecraft. Tis a grove circled dwelling set close to a hill where the branches are telling strange legends of ill. Over tender timber so old that they breathe of the dead, crawl the vines green and cold by strange nourishment fed, and no man knows the juices they suck up from the depths of their dank, slimy bed. In the gardens are growing tall blossoms and fair, each pallid bloom throwing perfume on the air, but the afternoon sun with its red slanting rays makes the picture loom done on the curious gaze and above the sweet scent of the blossoms rise odors of numberless days the rank grasses are wavering on terrace and lawn dim memories savoring of things that have gone the stones of the walks are encrusted and wet and a strange spirit stalks when the red sun has set and the soul of the watcher is filled with faint pictures he fain would forget. It was in the hot June time I stood by the scene, that scene when the gold rays of noontime beat bright on the green. But I shivered with cold, groping feebly for light as a picture unrolled in my age spanning sight. Saw the time I had been there before flash like fulgury out of the night. This one is also by H.P. Lovecraft and it's called Two Pan. See it in a woodland glen by a shallow, shallow reedy stream. Once I fell amusing when I was lulled into a dream. From the brook a shape arose, half man, half goat, whose it had instead of toes, and a beard adorned its throat. On a sea of rustic reeds sweetly played this hybrid man, not cared I for earthly needs, for I knew that this was Pan. Nymphs and satyrs gathered round to enjoy the lively sound. All too soon I woke in pain and returned to haunts of men, but in rural vows I'd fain live and hear Pan's pipes again. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit different than the previous videos, but um, I was not expecting such a short, um, story 
Well, it's more of a poem, I guess. So just consider this our little poetry corner today. Thank you all for watching and have a good evening.